Welcome everyone to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I'm Dr. Sylvia, your hostess, and this is Ask Away Health live stream. Today we're talking about kidney failure and more specifically, what are your risks of developing kidney failure and what can you do about reducing that risk? I know that kidney failure gets a rap as um, an old people's condition, but I'd like to turn that on its head this afternoon with you and show that um, Pretty much anyone can develop kidney failure. And when you're young, there are a few things that you can and should do to reduce your risks of developing kidney failure. So let's get into it. So thank you for joining me. Right, let's go um, talk about what exactly kidney failure is, but some background, okay? The kidneys, um, as we know, most people are born with two kidneys located in the back and above um, our waist and our hips. I'm just going to pull up my graphic. I love sharing graphic because I think it always helps give you a clearer um, idea of whatever it is that I'm talking about. So bear with me a second as I pull this up for you and hopefully you'll be able to see while I share that. Okay, so the kidneys are on either side of your spine, protected by the rib cage. Your kidney's main role is to filter waste out of blood, out of the blood. That's this main job. And it comes out um, as extra fluid from our blood, becomes urine that contains the waste products. Our kidneys are also responsible and they help for creating, in creating red blood cells. So that's important as well. And for controlling our blood pressure. And our kidneys are responsible for helping to regulate electrolytes. Those are really important chemicals within our body and the type of um, nutrients within our body that helps to support the, the, the work that our cells are, do, are doing to keep us well in different ways and also activates vitamin D. Now, the, we talk about acute and chronic kidney disease, and I'll talk about that in, in a little bit. But chronic, if you, if you develop chronic kidney failure, it can progress without proper treatment. So if you don't keep it under control, it can progress and just continue to get worse. If a person's kidney function is very low, they would need dialysis in order to get rid of the waste because the kidneys aren't working anymore. And Dialysis um, as a very specialized technology or medical technology or procedure can be a huge challenge to access in some countries where the healthcare systems and structures are poor. So it's essential that a lot of focus should be on preventing this problem, the problem of developing kidney disease, because A, it can be expensive to deal with and it may not be available in terms of the the treatment can be expensive, may not be available, can be challenging to live with the complications of kidney disease and kidney failure. So what this is definitely one of those that it's better to prevent it if you can. Okay, so kidney failure, I'm just going to check back on the stream and make sure that you can still <clears throat> see me. Okay, now, so kidney failure is what we call it when the kidneys stop working. And this could happen suddenly, in which case you're talking about an acute kidney problem, kidney failure, or it could develop over a period of time. And this is when we call it chronic. This is when it's referred to as chronic. The thing about acute kidney failure is that when it develops, sometimes, and in fact, majority of the times, it can be reversed if you get treatment right away. And if you don't have any serious health problems at the same time, it is possible for the kidneys to go back to working normally. Chronic kidney failure develops after the kidney has received damage over and over again, lots of injury over and over again for one reason or the other. And so there is a, a, a decrease in kidney function that spans a period of time. And so it's not reversible. And that's what I meant by it progresses, especially if it's not, if you don't pay attention to it, it's possible to control it. So if it develops and it's detected, and then you can control it over a period of time. But if nothing is done, <clears throat> if nothing is done, it just carries on. Now, if you're talking to your doctor or your nurse about your kidneys, you might hear them talking about kidney function. And this is a term that we use to describe how well or how poorly your kidneys are working. There are different measurements that are used to grade kidney function. And when you're young and healthy, 
you usually have a normal kidney function. But as people grow older or they develop illnesses over time, then kidney function could reduce. Kidney failure can happen at any age. Don't get me wrong. It can happen in babies, to people who are very elderly, and everyone in between for different reasons. But the key focus for our stream today is looking at young people between the ages of 18 and 40 years who can actually do a lot to reduce their risk of developing kidney disease because they think, oh, you know, I'm young, I don't need to worry about my kidneys, but actually you should think about your kidneys. So um, we've talked about where the kidneys are, we know where the kidneys are, we've talked about um, how kidney, what kidney failure means, and now I'd like us to look briefly at some of the symptoms of kidney failure. So let us just get in track um, and pull up some pull up some graphics here. Yep, so we're going to this stage, we're talking about the symptoms of kidney failure here. We've talked about what kidney failure um, is. So let me again share my screen with you and And hopefully we will get this going on. Yep, I've got the right window. I got that open. Is that open. Is that one's open. Okay. And sometimes when you have a technology meltdown, is this the right one? Yes, I've got the right one. <laughs> so let me open this up now. Okay, so we're talking about the symptoms of kidney failure. We've got the right window, and hopefully that should be showing on your screen. So here are some of the symptoms of kidney failure. You might experience um, problems passing less urine than normal. You might experience swelling in your legs. Your ankles and your feet particularly start getting puffy because Kidney failure causes your body to hold on to fluid. It can affect the skin, you could develop rash or itching. You could also develop chest pain and shortness of breath. Okay. Now, other symptoms, um, other symptoms of uh, kidney failure. So I'm just going to change that and pull up the next one. Pull up the next to share with you because there are other symptoms that could suggest. There we go. So, what's that one? Kidney failure could also affect your stomach and bowels, in which case people might develop nausea, vomiting, stomach pain, or they might have experienced a loss of their appetite. It could affect your brain and some of the symptoms that could um that would, you would experience in that case would be feeling very drowsy or tired, feeling just exhausted, getting confused, experiencing twitching of the muscles, um, seizures, or even developing or going into a coma in very severe cases. Generally, people with kidney failure may also experience nosebleeds. They may develop fever and joint pains. So you can see that there is a wide range of symptoms that a person with kidney failure could potentially develop. But what I think is really important to emphasize is that at the very early stage, there are no symptoms or there may be no symptoms. Some people might develop the fatigue or exhaustion, but at the very early stage, there are no symptoms. And so it may be something that is detected when some blood tests are being done or some other things are being done and the discovery that an individual has kidney failure then becomes apparent okay so those are um those are the symptoms i just wanted to, us to have a quick look at the symptoms of kidney injury next let us have a look because this is all related to um identifying your risk if you can identify what causes um if you can identify what the symptoms are if you can identify what causes is and your risk then you're quicker you can detect um, abnormalities quicker so that's why i think it's important for us to look at this so we're going to look at next that what could make you develop kidney failure? What are the causes? In other words, what are the causes, the things involved in people developing kidney failure? Now, I think I have some more graphics about this. So let me see if I can pull them up to show you as well. Right. So I shall share my screen again. And okay. 
so we're going to be talking about what people could develop when they have kidney failure and i think it's really important to just separate it quickly as we did earlier acute kidney injury and long-term or chronic kidney failure when a person develops acute kidney injury it could be to do with the blood flow to the kidney stopping or damage to the kidney or a blockage to the kidney, okay? Now, if somebody experiences a condition where the blood flow to their kidneys is stopped, they might develop very low blood volume as a result. So they, for example, a road traffic accident and there's excessive bleeding. That's one reason or one way blood flow can stop to the kidneys. But more commonly, what people would experience is having excess vomiting or, di or diarrhea. So they develop gastroenteritis. And, you know, I talked about kidney failure can happen in children or in babies. Well, this is one common reason that it could develop if it's not picked up and treated quickly. But grown-ups or adults <laughs> can also develop um, excess vomiting or diarrhea, leading to dehydration. All this will lead to reduction in the blood flow to the kidneys, which can lead to kidney damage. Another reason or another condition where the blood flow to the kidneys goes down is when the heart is pumping out less blood than normal. And it can happen in a, in a, in a number of different organ failures, like heart failure or liver failure, or even when there's very severe infection like sepsis. So other conditions where people could have their blood flow to the kidneys being halted or reduced um, can happen when there is an inflammation of the blood vessels or certain medicines. Medicines are a very important factor, whether they are tablets or solutions or creams, whatever. There are some medicines and drugs that are particularly potent to the kidneys and they can either affect the kidney directly or affect the way the kidney functions. So some medicines can affect the blood supply to the kidney, like anti-inflammation medicines, um, ibuprofen, or even some blood pressure treatments can cause, um, can affect the blood supply to the kidneys and some could even cause um, unusual reaction within the kidneys. So we're still talking about the reasons why there could be a sudden interruption to the kidney failure, that's an acute kidney injury. So another reason could be what we refer to as a disease of the kidneys. So there might be, um, an example is something called glomerulonephritis. It's a condition that can develop um, in the kidneys and that can result in damage to the kidneys. Um, other causes would be, again, reaction to some drugs like the anti-inflammatory medicines, but chemotherapy as well can be toxic to the kidneys and some antibiotics. Having some types of infections, developing blood clots or cholesterol deposits, as well as liquid dye using some types of x-rays can also be toxic to the kidneys, lead to kidney damage and result in an acute or sudden um, failure of the kidneys. Right now, another factor that could become a problem when you're talking about developing acute kidney injury is when there is a sudden uh, blockage or something develops that blocks urine from leaving the kidneys as it should do. That could be because um, an individual has a very large prostate, it's been growing and growing, and suddenly the prostate, which is the organ that sits behind um, the bladder in men, suddenly as it's growing, becomes so large, it, it begins to block the outflow, the tubes that come from the kidney going down into the bladder. Enlargement of the prostate is a, an aging process in a lot of men. So it could be that it's not because of cancer, it's just that the prostate is growing bigger and it gets to the point where it's so large it causes a blockage. That cold develops suddenly and leads to kidney injury. And so can conditions like um, ovarian cancer or bladder cancer, because again, as they grow, these are all organs that are within the pelvic area. As they grow, they could cause pressure or cause blockage on the tubes um, the urinary tubes running from the kidney down into the bladder. Other things that can block urine flow from leaving the kidneys are kidney stones or even developing blood clots. So these are the possible things that could develop if somebody, um, if there's sudden loss of function of your kidney. These are the, the problems that could lead to that, uh, that situation developing. Now, Let's have a look at what could cause long-term uh, developing chronic kidney failure. So that's the long-term kidney disease. Now it's important because these are the ones that you really want to look at. 
If you think about it, the examples that we showed that could cause acute kidney injury, many of them you may not really be able to do much about. Sure, you can um, avoid using certain medicines, um, but there's some of those conditions that you may not be able to control if somebody's involved in a road traffic accident or they develop heart failure or certain severe infections. Um, so those are the cause, some of the causes that can lead to um, acute kidney injury. But when it comes to chronic kidney failure, there are conditions such as high blood pressure, because over time, having high blood pressure can put um, strain on the small blood vessels in the kidneys, which will then lead to the kidneys not being able to function properly. Another condition is diabetes mellitus, it, when there's too much glucose in the blood, which again can cause strain on the kidney, on the kidney, kidney mechanism. So it affects some of the tiny filters. Remember that we said the kidney um, is the, one of those organs that gets rid of waste and it has little filters within its structure. So having too much glucose in the blood can damage those filters and lead to kidney damage. Another cause is high cholesterol, high cholesterol. This build up of fatty deposits um, in the blood vessels that are supplying your kidneys and then makes it harder for them to do their job and contribute to kidney failure. Kidney functions also, kidney infections also comes into play here because we talked about them um, in acute kidney injury where they can cause problems, but disease or infection of the kidneys and having them repeatedly and not being properly treated or just going recurrently can also contribute to um, long-term kidney disease. And if you want to know some of the causes of kidney infections, we do have a short video on that topic, which I think just released a couple of weeks ago. So make sure you can have a look. I'll put it in the description box below because there are some preventable causes of recurring kidney infections or bladder infections. Um, we've talked about kidney diseases. Um, again, they come up in, in the cause for chronic kidney disease because if they're not treated and if they're allowed to progress, then they can lead to a um, reduction of a person's kidney function. So things like um, kidney inflammation, polycystic kidney disease, where there is um, an inherited condition where there are lots of uh, cysts, growths within the kidney that can contribute towards chronic kidney failure. Again, blockages in the flow of urine. So as somebody who keeps having kidney stones, um, small, small stones, large stones, and they keep coming back, or somebody who has an enlarged prostate, which as I said, can suddenly cause a blockage or can gradually grow and cause that um, blockage to the urine outflow. Again, long-term use of certain medicines. I said at the beginning that medication is a, an important aspect of um, kidney failure. So it's, it's really, and lots of these medicines can be taken over the counter. A lot of them um, can be used in ways that people do not realize the kind of risk they're putting themselves. So it's really important to be aware that what medication that you're taking could be relevant. And I'm going to look at them specifically as we get into the next segment of the, of the stream. Okay, so just a quick check on the chat before I go into that area. I just want to say thank you so much to Caroline Dyer. Thank you so for joining an interesting topic. Thank you. And Dr. Helen, happy birthday, Dr. Helen. This is Dr. Helen from New Wine Platter her birthday wishing you lots and lots of joy and um and blessings and if you know dr helen she has a youtube channel called new and platter make sure you um go and say share, share some show her some joy she's having a live stream this evening marking her birthday so go and shout out to her and um thank you david for dropping in david saying hi thank you so much guys i appreciate your checking in the stream right so we're going to carry on um, talking about the yeah, so I, we've just finished talking about this. I need to, I need to coordinate my, I need to coordinate my um. <laughs> I need to coordinate my graphics and my um. <laughs> yeah, so just a summary of what we've talked about already. So causes of chronic kidney disease: high blood pressure, high cholesterol, kidney infections, or kidney diseases blockage to you in flow and some drugs. Okay, so that takes us nicely into the meat of the matter, if you like. How can we reduce the risks of, of kidney failure? What are the things that we can do to reduce our risks of developing kidney failure? So I'm just going to pull up another graphic, as you know, I love to do for you. 
So let's take, let's pick this one up now. And which screen are we sharing? So it is going to be that one. And we're going to share this one. Okay, fantastic. I'm just going to let this play on and then, okay. So we've looked at what causes acute kidney injury and we've looked at what causes chronic kidney injury. Um, these are episodes that can lead to kidney failure. So ac acute kidney failure, sudden loss of kidney function, chronic kidney failure, um, something that progresses over time. We've looked at the common of causes or the most likely causes for chronic kidney failure. So the key things that you have to think about are, if you're somebody who has a health condition like diabetes or high blood pressure, you need to look after this as you, particularly as you go older. If you are diagnosed with high blood pressure and you're told that you need to take medication to control your blood pressure, please remember, remain on your medication. Don't just stop them without speaking to your doctor. Again, we do have, I do have a video looking at um, common reasons or issues around stopping your blood pressure medicine. So please check that out because I think that helps to shed some light on some of the issues around taking blood pressure tablets every day and the, some of the difficulties that people could have. The same refers to a condition like diabetes. It's really important that it's managed carefully. These conditions mean that you would need to have medication sometimes. It could be tablets or it could be injections in the case of uh, diabetes. But it also needs, it means you need to have monitoring. So you need to have your blood pressure and blood sugar checked regularly. It's important to um, work with your healthcare providers so that you're meeting the recommended targets because you may not feel ill while all this monitoring is going on. But it's important to remember that when we looked at how high blood pressure causes kidney failure and how diabetes causes kidney failure is because of a long-term effect on the blood vessels, the tiny blood vessels going to the kidney and because of the long-term effect of the glucose on the kidney filters. So you may feel fine today, but not realize that because you're not complying with your treatment, there's a likelihood of getting kidney failure in the next 10 or 15 years. That's why it's important to have this discussion now. Another thing that's really important is stop smoking. Smoking increases the risk of heart disease, high blood pressure, heart attacks, strokes, all of which, all of which are evidence, research and studies have shown are linked with a higher risk of chronic kidney disease. So there's nothing positive or good to say about smoking and kidney disease. It is clearly related. So if you're somebody who's in the habit and you're thinking, okay, you're in 30s or your 40s, could affect your blood pressure and it could definitely lead to developing kidney problems. The next thing that you should look at in terms of reducing your risk of kidney failure is a healthy diet. A healthy balanced diet can reduce your risk of kidney disease because it contributes towards keeping your blood pressure and cholesterol. Remember we talked about cholesterol being a factor in um, chronic kidney disease. Well, this is one of the reasons apart from blocking the kidney itself, but it can, uh, it can also contribute to heart disease. So keeping your cholesterol down not only means that you're not having cholesterol deposits, but it, that could block the blood uh, vessels to your kidney, but it also reduces the risk of blood high blood pressure. So you can see how these things are connected. So healthy diet is another key um, essential action to, to keeping your risk of kidney failure down. Next, manage your alcohol intake. As with smoking, drinking excess amounts of alcohol has been shown to be associated with kidney disease, okay? It can cause increased blood pressure and affect cholesterol. Some people think that, oh, um, alcohol doesn't, it doesn't contribute to weight gain. Actually, alcohol is a very high source of liquid calories. So it's really something else that's important that could have an effect on kidney failure. So it's important to manage your alcohol intake. Um, the recommended is to keep under 14 units a week and spread the drinking. So if you're somebody who does take up to 14 units, don't take your 14 units in one night or in one day. Spread them out. Try and keep a couple of days in between. So for example, if you're having four units on a Monday, um, and then you split the rest of the 10 units or five on a Wednesday and five at the weekend, but not to have a bender on Monday and a bender on Tuesday and a bender on Wednesday, or the whole 40 units in one night. All that is just a 
quick, quick, um, quickly moving towards the level of, of really bad um, liver problems and can contribute towards heart disease and kidney failure. So lots of lots of problems there. Another um, another point is to exercise regularly. And the benefits of exercise is on the other conditions. Again, it reduces your risk of, de of um, developing high blood pressure. It can help to keep your weight under control. So you're less likely to develop diabetes as well. So overall, it will reduce your risk of developing kidney disease. Now, pain killers, herbal medicines, um, bleaching or toning creams. I left that to the last because I think this is a really big, it's a really big issue. Please be careful with medicines. Medicines like ibuprofen, naproxen, anti-inflammatory drugs can be toxic to the kidney itself and, and they can affect the blood vessels that affect that supply the kidney so a couple of ways in which some herbal preparations particularly when they are being made up in with, with with things that we're not sure of the constituents so if you don't know what it contains many of these drugs could have very potent uh, damaging effect on the kidneys um, there is a popular herbal medicine called Agbo that is taken in Nigeria, where I'm from originally. And while there are health, some health benefits towards using this herbal um, concoction, sometimes it can be adulterated because it's not standardized. And so we don't know exactly what items are going in, in what quantities across the board. You might have some people mixing up all sorts of things and coming up with Agbo and another group of people mixing up something else altogether and saying this is a go as well and causing, um, causing problems because nobody knows exactly what's gone into it. Because it's not being standardized, because it's not being regulated, the possibility of using certain herbs that could be damaging to the kidneys and has been shown in particularly in um, in young people to contribute towards kidney failure it's a very strong possibility so if you're somebody who is in the habit of using herbal preparations please check them make sure that um, you're taking them from somewhere that is reasonably um, trustworthy better avoid them if you cannot be certain of that avoid taking herbal preparations if you're already on prescribed medications always have a discussion, have a dialogue with a healthcare provider about the safety of, I've given an example, just an example of one that I know of, but there's so many different types of herbal, herbal preparations around the world. And while I agree that some of them can have some benefits, I also want to sound a note of warning for people who take them without realizing that they could cause significant problems. And um, bleaching or well, the other for them is toning creams. That's a cute way of describing them. But basically, these um, creams that contain, particularly that contain mercury, which itself is a toxic agent to the kidneys. Now, they've been banned in many countries where you have very strong healthcare systems and very strong regulation, but they are still used and um, produced and used in a lot of countries. And um, they, these using these creams to such an extent, they can be, be absorbed into your blood. If they can be absorbed into your blood, they can find their way to the kidneys and that is how they cause kidney damage and can lead to kidney failure. And there are some people who practice using these so-called toning creams on babies. Creams like bleaching creams or toning creams or steroids have no business on baby skin, please. Outside of the recommendation by a doctor, for example, to treat certain skin conditions with steroids, please do not put anything um, like bleaching creams or toning creams on your on your baby because you want to try to turn up their looks or whatever the excuse might be. Because, and this is a fact, um, and this is something that we have observed, can lead to kidney failure. So, my friends. I'm going to leave it here because this is what I wanted to reference about kidney failure. These are the key things I wanted us to take away. Um, age increases the risk of kidney failure. That's true. I'm not saying that's not the case, but we are getting lots of younger people developing kidney failure um, while they're much, much younger. And so um, looking at some of these um, activities or some of these points that I've, I've um, brought out, I think is really important to help us uh, to help us reduce the risk of developing kidney failure. 
So um, I'm just going to have a quick check, check on the chat to see if anybody has any questions. Um, let's have a look here. OK, that's great. So thank you so much to everyone for checking in. I appreciate your saying hi. And um, next time, we're going to be looking at more um, at-risk conditions. So make sure you keep a date with us on next Friday. Live streams usually around 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. I always play a time on the, on the um, notifications. So just make sure you look out for that. Now, on Ask Away Health, we talk about health conditions, wellness topics, things that will hopefully help us um, treat our health better, help us reduce the risk of developing disease. So hopefully these points on kidney failure that I've described um, will help people who are um, particularly at risk, who may not be paying much attention to things like their blood pressure, their risk of developing diabetes, and hopefully um, help them uh, deal better with, with such um, con with such conditions and hopefully help us be more proactive about seeking health. So on the channel, we tend to publish um, one, a couple of videos every week. So there's a new video out on Tuesdays and live stream out with myself on Fridays and um, where we talk about whatever is topical or whatever issues that I think, you know, get lots of questions being asked. So I'm really great, uh, grateful that you guys took some time to join me this afternoon and hopefully we'll be seeing you again next um, Friday. But don't forget, there's a new video out on Tuesday. So keep an eye out for that. I'm just going to say, take one more hi. Um, hello from Big Picture now. Thank you for your comment. Um, thank you so much for this highly important health maintenance topic. You're absolutely right. It is a, it's a crucial topic. It's really important and one that we all need to pay attention to. So guys, I'm going to, um, I'm going to end the broadcast now. Thank you for joining me. Take care and see you next time. Bye-bye.